today we will talk about prostate first of all we will talk about the uh, symptoms related to prostate prostate uh, symptoms are related to urine urine symptoms are divided into two categories one is obstructive and another is irritative obstructive symptoms are like poor flow and irritative symptoms are like dysuria nocturia prostate generally causes the poor flow this is very important to remember this is the key point prostate causes the poor flow uh, for example if one patient comes with the irritative voiding symptoms like nocturia increased urinary frequency or dysuria but with the normal flow in that patient we cannot make the diagnosis of bph now a patient coming with the symptoms of poor flow what are the possibilities or what are the differential diagnosis by in making the differential diagnosis we can see that from the starting of the urethra to the end of the urethra from this point to the this point you can see the different causes like in prostatic urethra the causes bph next come this bulbar urethra or anterior urethra in that the second cause comes stricture urethral stone is the third possibility urethral stone stuck at two places generally in the prostatic urethra or in the just proximal to the meatus why stone stops at these two places not the other places in prostatic urethra when the stone comes it causes pain and because of the pain sphincter constricts it stops the passage of stone further so this is the first side where the stone impacts urethra's na narrow point is meatal uh, external urethral meatus so this is the second place where the stone impacts fourth possibility is meatal stenosis here meatal stenosis fifth this prepuce unites in front in front of the external urethral meatus and this is the phimosis these are the five possibilities and in the last when you are not able to find any cause then you can think about the sixth cause that is neurogenic bladder to find out and to make the eliminate the different possibilities and to make the perfect diagnosis in history you have to you have to ask about this four things one is age second is duration of symptoms third is straining during straining whether the urine flow improves or worsens fourth urine stops at penile tip or not by asking this four uh, things four uh, symptoms in the history we can differentiate different points bph is generally in the older age group bph is in the older age group while rest all these four in the younger age group on straining on straining in bph flow decreases while uh, why why on straining the flow decreases because on straining it causes activates a sympathetic system and sympathetic system is, uh, blocks the internal sphincter that's why the flow decreases while in stricture on straining flow increases improves you can imagine 
if there is a some obstruction in the tube and if you uh, put more pressure then the flow increases because it will overcome the some part of the structure in the stone the classical point is most important point is having the short duration the patient will be having a history of one or two days something like that because the stone cannot stay in the urethra without symptom for longer period and another important thing is patient always feel of something stuck in in the urine that also points towards the urethral stone next possibility is meatal stenosis and phimosis in these two points meatal stenosis and phimosis you can ask the patient whether urine stops at the tip of the penis or not if the patient is saying that uh, urine stops at the tip of the penis then you should suspect about the meatal stenosis and phimosis uh, one important point is that these two things cannot be diagnosed by any investigation this uh, diagnosis can be made only on the examination so it is very important to examine the meatal opening and the prepuce after making this things if there is everything is okay then you can think about the neuro neurogenic bladder in the neurogenic bladder uh, neurogenic bladder you have to see the gait of the patient sometimes sometimes the patient is entering in the opery and you uh, see the some limping in the gait then you can suspect that there, uh, there is some weakness in the lower limb and uh, uh, along with the lower limb weakness there will be there can be a possibility of neurogenic bladder second thing on examination you can see the perineal sensations that will be decreased these are the all the six possibilities where we can see uh, make the diagnosis about the poor flow particularly thinking about the bph there are two important things which we have to see in the history that is one is nocturnal enuresis or urinary incontinence another is backache sometimes the patient comes and the patient says uh, that in the night urine comes out in the bed immediately you should think about that overflow incontinence overflow incontinence is one type of in incontinence where where there is a overflow overflow means bladder is already full bladder is already full and whatever urine coming into the bladder that is coming out how you differentiate uh, how you find out that is it can be overflow incontinence on examination you will see that a bladder lump present in the lower abdomen lower abdomen overflow incontinence or chronic retention this is also a, a chronic retention this is why this is important why it is called chronic retention it is called chronic retention because there is a retention of the urine but there is no pain because this retention happened in long period of time gradually developed it is not a acute retention where the patient is having the severe pain 
okay and in chronic retention there is always possibility of bilateral hydronephrosis and hydrourator leading to CRF next symptom is backache in backache why uh, why backache history is important in the prostate if the patient uh, having urinary symptom along with the backache you should always think about ca prostate you should keep this in the mind for this ca prostate that is important to do per rectal examination in parectal examination what is important parectal examination you have to see two points one is in duration of the prostate and another is nodularity this all about the symptoms related to prostate how we make the diagnosis of uh, bph and what are the different complications like chronic retention or ca prostate possibilities we have discussed these points thank you